First part of Module 1 in CE Laws, Contracts and Ethics is Profession and Ethics. Context is hailed from Engineering Ethics, 4th edition by Charles Harris, Michael Pritchard, and Michael Robbins. Welcome to the program. How do we define profession and a professional? Is this a person wearing a business suit or is a professional described as the individual working in an office? An early meaning of the term referred to a free act of commitment to a way of life. There is a long history of the evolution of the term and by the late 17th century, the term had been secularized whereby Oxford Shorter Dictionary defined it as the act or fact of professing, so it has come to mean the occupation which one professes to be skilled in and follow. It is a vocation in which professed knowledge of a certain branch of learning is used in its application to the affairs of others, or in the practice of art based upon it. Each professional took an oath he has to uphold during his lifetime. If we distinguish between an occupation which is simply a way to make a living and a profession, the question is how a transition from a mere occupation to a profession is accomplished. The answer is to be found in a series of characteristics that are marks of professional status. First, extensive training. Entrance into a profession typically requires an extensive period of training and this training is of an intellectual character. Many occupations require extensive apprenticeship and training and they often require practical skills, but the training typically required of professionals focuses more on intellectual content than practical skills. Professionals' knowledge and skills are grounded in a body of theory. This theoretical base is obtained through formal education, usually in an academic institution. Second, vital knowledge and skills. Professionals' knowledge and skills are vital to the well-being of a larger society. A society that has sophisticated scientific and technological base is especially dependent on its professional elite. We rely on the knowledge possessed by physicians to protect us from disease and restore us to health. The lawyer has knowledge vital to our welfare if we have been sued or accused of crime, if our business has been forced into bankruptcy, or if we want to get a divorce or buy a house. The accountant's knowledge is also important for our business success or when we have to file our tax returns. Likewise, we are dependent on the knowledge and research of scientists and engineers for our safety in an airplane. For many of the technological advances on which our material civilization rests and for national defense. Since professional services are vital to the general welfare, citizens are willing to pay any price to get them. Number three, control of services. Professions usually have a monopoly on, or at least considerable control over, the provision of professional services in their area. This control is achieved in two ways. First, the profession convinces the community that only those who have graduated from a professional school should be allowed to hold the professional title. The profession usually also gains considerable control over professional schools by establishing accreditation standards that regulate the quality, curriculum content, and number of such schools. Second, a profession often attempts to persuade the community that there should be a licensing system for those who want to enter the profession. Those who practice without a license are subject to legal penalties. Although it can be argued that monopoly is necessary to protect the public from unqualified practitioners, it also increases the power of professionals in the marketplace. 4. Autonomy in the workplace. Professionals often have an unusual degree of autonomy in the workplace. This is especially true of the professionals in private practice, but even professionals who work in large organizations may exercise a large degree of individual judgment and creativity in carrying out their professional responsibilities. Whether in private practice or in an organizational setting, physicians must determine the most appropriate type of medical treatment for their patients, and lawyers must decide the most successful type of defense for their clients. This is one of the most satisfying aspects of professional work. Number five is claim to ethical regulation. 
Professionals claim to be regulated by ethical standards, many of which are embodied in a code of ethics. The degree of control that professions possess over the services that are vital to the well-being of the rest of the community provides an obvious temptation for abuse, so most professions attempt to limit these abuses by regulating themselves for the public benefit. Another way to understand the importance of the ethical element in professionalism is to examine two models of the professional. First, the business model. According to the business model, an occupation is primarily oriented toward making a profit within the boundaries set by law. Just like any other business, a profession sells a product or service in the marketplace for a profit. Second, the professional model. This model offers quite a different picture of occupations such as medicine, law, and engineering. Crucial to the professional model is the idea that engineers and other professionals have an implicit trust relationship with the larger public. The terms of this trust relationship, sometimes referred to as the social contract with the public, are the professionals agree to regulate their practice so that it promotes the public good. In the words of most engineering codes, they agree to hold paramount the safety, health, and welfare of the public. Let's distinguish ethics and morality. Although they are used interchangeably, ethics are moral principles that govern a person's behavior or the conducting of an activity. Morality is defined as principles concerning the distinction between right and wrong or good and bad behavior. If ethical commitment is central to professionalism, we must turn more directly to ethics, especially to professional ethics. How does professional ethics differ from other types of ethics? In answering this question, it is helpful to distinguish between three types of ethics or morality. First, common morality. Common morality is the set of moral beliefs shared by almost everyone. It is the basis or at least the reference point for the other two types of morality. Second, personal morality. Personal ethics or personal morality is the set of moral beliefs that a person holds. For most of us, our personal moral beliefs closely parallel the precepts of common morality. We believe that murder, lying, cheating, and stealing are wrong. However, our personal beliefs may differ from common morality in some areas, especially where common morality seems to be unclear or in a state of change. Third, professional ethics. Professional ethics is the set of standards adopted by professionals in so far as they view themselves acting as professionals. Every profession has its professional ethics, medicine, law, architecture, pharmacy, and so forth. Engineering ethics is that set of ethical standards that applies to the profession of engineering. Professional conflicts of interest are situations where professionals have an interest that, if pursued, might keep them from meeting their obligations to their employees or clients. Professional rights are special rights that arise from the professional role and obligations it involves. Three professional rights have special importance. First would be the basic right of professional conscience. Second would be the right of consensuous refusal. Third, the right for professional recognition. The PICE or Philippine Institute of Civil Engineers Incorporated. On August 13, 1975, PRC accredited the organization as number seven, although it was SEC registered on 11th of December 1973. On July 8, 2013, the amended bylaws are approved by Securities Exchange Commission. The PIC Vision, the leader among professional organizations known globally for professionalism, integrity, excellence, and social responsibility, a key player in nation building. The PIC Mission, to advance the welfare of the members and the development and prestige of the civil engineering profession and to be a dynamic force in nation building. The objectives of the Institute shall be the advancement of the knowledge and practice in civil engineering, the fostering and improvement of civil engineering education, the stimulation of research in civil engineering, the professional improvement of its members, the maintenance of high ethical standards in the practice of civil engineering, the promotion of good public and private clientele relationships, the development of fellowship among civil engineers, and the encouragement of professional relations with other allied technical and scientific organizations. 
the establishment of a central point of reference and union for its members and the civil engineering profession, and lastly, the acquisition, ownership, management, and disposal of real or personal property incidental to or in furthermore of the above objectives of the Institute.